And so, you know, we, we spend a lot of time on regulations uh, but for good reason because they're... <laughs> there's a lot they, of regulations. <laughs> there's a lot of them, and they affect everything that we do, whether we like it or not. Um, and so in this case, we have a uh, congressman who's making some interesting claims. Uh, so United States Congressman Brad Sherman um, has called on his colleagues to outlaw cryptocurrencies outright. Um, and he says essentially that they threaten to disempower... Th this is the verbiage that, uh, that really stands out, <laughs> to say the least, saying they threaten to disempower American foreign policy and diminish the rule of law. That is a very, like, sharp statement. <laughs> um, and, uh, one more thing that he was saying, uh, an awful lot of our international power stems from the fact that the dollar is a standard unit of international finance and transactions. It is the announced purpose of the supporters of cryptocurrency to take that power away from this. This is what he's saying. Let's hear what you guys think. Okay, that's uh, your senator. That's that's my senator. He's one of us. Right? He's one of us. <laughs> yeah. Um, gosh, I disagree. <laughs> you know, like that's very much. That's a calm, that's a calm Let's way just to start put there. It. That's not what people expect from you. That's um, just an understatement. Right. Uh, Part of the systems that we have, you know, we've got lots of outside of Facebook, what they're working on. Most of it's something we've talked about before, you know, a lot of the cryptocurrencies are already pegged to the dollar and they're donated in USD. Uh, you know, uh, like you go Tether, for example, you know, uh, they, they use a dollar, right? A decent uh, amount of stable coins uh, that are pegged tied to, to dollar. a yeah. dollar, right? Most of them. Yeah. Yes. Um, so if this is really some big international conspiracy to take the dollar out, then why are we pegging our stable coins to a dollar? You know, that people are saying that as a way to legitimize the, the, the crypto. If anything, right? America is leading in all of this and they need to not listen to this guy and just get more on board. <laughs> uh, because because that news is already two weeks old. Right. There are, there are a lot of people who are already commenting on that. Yeah. And many people already go to that Mr. Sherman profile and figure out that most of his, if not all of his sponsors are for financial industry. So that's that maybe explains something to us. So these guys just uh, want to be as good as his money or the money who he's getting from other people. He's just making his job. So you think that he's essentially just another politician that's being driven by... Uh, well, I would say if not he's another politician, he's just a politician. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to attend me. But of course, uh, he, the comments which uh, Sherman made is atrocious. And uh, but that his personal style, he's known for such atrocious commentaries. And uh, I think that many people, okay, many politicians outside of the United States, unfortunately, will use this commentary to rose even more kind of anti-American rhetorics, which is not good. And. Uh, who we can blame for that, right? We cannot blame for that politics as a whole because political system as a whole is broken. <laughs> so it's just <laughs> nonsensical to blame. It. And I feel like this this just goes back to like this constant issue that we see of like the the old school uh, way of thinking that blockchain and cryptocurrencies are disrupting versus the new school like mm -hmm. innovation focused mindset. Right, like he's obviously, with along with the people that he's working with or who are donating to his, his himself. And, and fortunately, if you are able to name me, where is a new school of politics? Just oh, I wasn't talking. I wasn't talking about the, yes, I wasn't saying I'm talking about politics in general. I think again, most of the political sphere is in that older school uh, train of thought. Most of it, not that all. That is my point. Yeah. I'm asking, where is a new type of politician? Just name me one, which is. Uh, well, okay, we got this new candidate from Democratic Party, Mr. A Lee. Of them. Yes, a couple of them, but most most prominent of them is Mr. Lee, who keeps talking about the cryptocurrencies. But if you read his platform, he's got for about two hundred fifty something uh, 
points which he wants to implement. Cryptocurrency is only one of those points. Yeah. So he didn't actually understand and he didn't actually even care about all this decentralization concept. He yes. wanted to be in power and again be king of the mountains as being his subjects. That's the usual politician. So my question to you, Jason, and to you, Chris, show me one politician, I mean like one in the world, who really understand what we're talking about. I don't even talk about presidents. I just name you one. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> okay. Um, mm. ah, difficult, uh, right? A, a one politician one that politician. we feel like we could have... Uh, Who um, represents our opinion. Yeah. Just one. I mean, of course, we have like I don't know, McAfee, but... Well, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that he's a politician. He's I'm just politician, saying yeah. that the type of... Uh, personages we have now representing us in a political sphere. It's a type of market. It, it is not good. That's it is not good at all. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of, you know, uh, finance people that get tapped to talk at these political things that I think do a good job. I think Fred Wilson's always done a good job. He's mm-hmm. done right by me and my book anyway. So, uh, people I pay attention to. Uh, yeah. Well, but he still is not that politician. He's not yeah, a politician. Like, yeah, influence-wise, yeah. like how much influence. He doesn't have any no. political yeah. perspective. Well, maybe he, he gets has. called in for stuff. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, to be kind of, to wrap it up, I think that I'm, I'm, until we understand the importance of the political moves, of the political representations, we're going to be keep receiving such a commentaries from all sides of the political spectrum because we are enemies for all of them. Yeah. And, and yeah, just to add on to that, I mean, we have a basic understanding of how politics work. If you, you know, take the perspective of a politician, where's the incentive for a politician who truly wants uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency to, to grow and gain massive adoption? Where is the incentive for them to keep their career and <laughs> further that objective, right? Right now, it, it's you have to find a large shift or find a large group of support within the political system. They would have to solve the adoption issue themselves. Well, there are <laughs> actually a lot of different questions inside that one which you just asked because, uh, first of all, uh, there must be some organized movement. For yeah. example, we, you remember that movement of the Occupy Wall Street, right? It was disorganized, but it was a movement. It made headlines. It made headlines and it made more or less some maybe political candidates from that, but it went nowhere. It actually crushed. They wanted to crush the Wall Street, but they were crushed by themselves. <clears throat> that was not probably their fault entirely, the- but we have to learn from this. So, but they were influential. They were much more influential than all cryptocurrency are together on the politicians because what's happening now, there is like a five or six corporations which are financing these lobbying groups. We talked about those guys maybe last month. Remember this one, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like Ethereum Foundation or Ripple Foundation. But who else do we have? Nobody. Yep. All of the our leaders, I don't know, Andreas Antonopoulos, he's completely not political. He's do everything which we can which he can. And I can understand him, of course, because he was from he is basically from previous generation who was heavily persecuted by you know whom. And what can we <laughs> what can we do about that? We can anymore? do uh, well we can talk about that. That's what we're doing. So we can present our position. We can uh, maybe raise some concerns because if we don't want that to happen, let's select our own senators, right? Yeah, it's got to play the system, I guess. Okay, guys, I see you're distressed. <laughs> let's move on. Yeah. This is always a distressing uh, thing. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, you're sitting here saying we don't have a dog in the race. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have a yeah, dog that's, and pony show. That's how, that. that's how it feels outside of, you know, working on the out, outside of that system. So maybe that's the solution. Well, of course, that. of course. I'm not saying that it's just oh, the whole point of the movement was uh, to influence the politics through yeah. uh, technology. But even how Feeney himself one only one big piece of 
well, he never wrote a big article, but he wrote some notes in crypto punk lists. And that crypto punk list contains, until recently, you can check it out. And it says that without political power, all of these crypto punk's dreams is just utopia. Check me out. <laughs> and that's how Finney just basically got further <laughs> with everything which we're doing. Well, I think we have to at least listen. That's the start. Come on, say something. You just... Uh, I mean, I think i think this political round uh, that we're going through right now, like we talked about a few weeks ago, you know, we, we finally have some people that, that are more technically savvy. And it's like people have to be technically savvy a first step, you know, and, yeah. then, and then cryptocurrency <laughs> yeah. is like 15 steps down the line, you know. Um, yeah. We've seen what happened with, you know, uh, Facebook That's and true. everybody getting pulled in in front of, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah oh. on like, like 10 years past tech. <laughs> right, right. That's true. And I feel that finally this batch of people that are, you know, campaigning, um, we've got a couple people that at least understand technology. Uh, you mean from the, thems or gops? Uh, 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 the democratic people. Democrat, yeah. Democrat. Yeah, that's a problem. It's just going to, at the end of the day, it's just going to be slower than we want it to be. Correct. But there is movement and that's all we can really... I mean, you got people like Andrew Yang, he understands tech, you know, yeah. uh, he's, you know, a long shot, but, you know, he still but has some in interesting in ideas that I, that I yeah. like, and he's talking about things. Exactly. And then, you know... That's the we, first step. And we've got, uh, uh it Beto or Beto? What, how do you guys say? Oh, oh, whatever his name is. The guy from Texas. Beto. The, the, uh, Call of the Dead Cow guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, he's got some, he understands tech, so there's a couple picks. <laughs> Right, well, yeah, but the bottom line is it's a long, long road ahead of us. Exactly. And we'll, we'll, we'll leave that one at that. Uh, leave some comments if you have any ideas in <laughs> yes, <hopefully>. this whole <laughs> situation because you know, it feels a little somber at the moment. <laughs> uh, but let's shift on to the next topic. 